Chapter 197 of Srimad Bhagavatam Vyoma, the last of the Asuras Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya The boys were fond of playing games while tending the cows. One of their favorite games was catching the thief. The last of the Asuras in the troop of Kamsa was one by name Vyoma. He came to Brindavana and he decided to join in their games. The game was simple. Some of the boys would pretend that they were goats and go about fearlessly. Others would pretend to be thieves and catch hold of the goats. And so the game would proceed until they got tired of it. Vyoma took the form of a cowherd and joined the group of the thieves. And one by one the goats were stolen by him. He brought them all to a cave which was nearby and closed it up with a big rock covering its mouth. There were only four or five boys left. Krishna knew who was making this mischief and he became very angry. When anyone came to attack him or Rama, Krishna would smile and tackle the miscreant with that smile ever on his face. But if someone hurt his comrades or his devotees, his anger would be terrible. This was what happened during the Kaliya incident. During the night when Shanka Chuda carried away the gopis and on several other occasions. Finding that his friends had been kidnapped by the Asura, Krishna sprang on him like a lion would on his victim. Vyoma, as befitted his name, assumed his huge form but he could not slip out of the hold Krishna had on him. Krishna lifted him up and dashed him to the ground and killed him like the like he would a wild animal which was dangerous to others. He then, with great effort, released the Gopala boys from inside the cave and they went back to Vrindavan. Om Shri Guru Bhyonama Shri Krishna Panamast Chapter 198 of Srimad Bhagavatam Akrura arrives in Vrindavana Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Akrura spent a sleepless night. He was so excited at the thought of seeing Krishna and Rama in person. He knew who they were and this secret had been jealously guarded by some of them. Now, Kamsa evidently knew it because Narada had made it a point to tell him. Akrura was worried as to what the future of Mathura would be. Would Kamsa's plans succeed or fail? Early in the morning, Akrura left Mathura with his thoughts set on Krishna and he travelled impatiently. He found that time seemed to be long, that the movements were dragging him and he smiled to himself since he knew that the horses were going as fast as they could. The cloud of dust which rose behind the chariot was ample proof of that. The horses were as fleet as the wind, but then his mind was faster. He was already in the blessed spot named Brindavana and his mind's eye, he could see the handsome brothers with their glowing faces. Akrura thought to himself, I do not know how much punya I have accumulated in my previous births, for me to have this heaven-sent opportunity of seeing the Lord in person. Punya is not enough. I must have performed tapas intensely. No, even that is not enough. This is the grace of some great person who in his compassion has granted me this good fortune. Here I am with my mind tainted with the things of the world, the gratification of the senses, and ridden with the six dread enemies, Kama and its attendants. And I, this sinful I, I, this sinful I, will be seeing Krishna, the Lord of Lords. It is as hard to attain as the proper pronunciation of the Vedas for a low-born man. And yet, it is not strange. I think of a river which is trine and on its surface twigs and pieces of straw, low being like me, float. 
by the result of karma, one among millions may find the solace of seeing the Lord. Like a stray twig may be propelled towards the banks of the river and so be saved from drifting along infinitely. All my sins must have been washed away or else how would this have been possible? The lotus feet of the Lord which are what the rishis meditate upon, those very feet will be touched by these sinful hands tonight. Kamsa is indeed the kindest of men since he has chosen me to go on this errand of his. The poor ends are indeed favorable to me. The animals pass me on the right side. I will see Krishna, his beautiful face illuminated by his smile. Narayana has assumed the form of Krishna to save this world. They say from its sinfulness. And that Krishna, that Narayana in human form, I will see with these earthly eyes tonight. Mahadeva and the other gods worship him incessantly and he has granted infinite wealth to them. Shri Devi has ever been sitting at his feet and Saubhagya is hers forever. Devotees and Rishis worship his sacred feet and they have realized the Brahman. The lotus feet of the Lord have wandered all over Vrindavan with the Gopalas and he has been full of compassion for them. His feet have been caressed by the gopis and they have found love. And I, with these sinful hands, will touch his feet, these same feet, and he will grant me all these things. What wonderful luck is mine. I will reach Vrindavan this evening. I will go straight to the house of Nanda Gopa. When I reach there, I will jump down from the chariot and rush inside. There I will see Krishna and Rama with their parents and their friends. Great joy will be mine. I will fall at his feet and he will place his hand on my head. Krishna will be kind to me. Even after I tell him that I have been sent by Kamsa to fetch him to Mathura, even when he knows the purpose of this mission of mine, he will not hate me. I am but the arrow shot by Kamsa and Kamsa is the miscreant. Krishna will know that and so he will be gracious to me. With a smiling face he will welcome me and all my sins will be burnt away like moths when they touch a flame. He will then raise me up and embrace me. My body will be purified by the touch of his mighty arms. Thinking on Krishna thus, Akrura, the son of Palka, reached Brindavana. The western sky was reddened by the rays of the setting sun. Akrura's excitement was so great that he could not stay in the chariot any longer. Getting down from the chariot, he looked all around him. So this is where Krishna lives. These are his favorite haunts. Thinking thus, Akrura bent his eyes on the ground. There, he saw a glorious sight. The ground had strange markings on it. He had never seen the like of it before. He bent down to have a clearer look. The entire ground was covered with the signs of Shanka and Chakra. The conch and the discus, the two sacred things held in the hands of Narayana. Akrura was on the point of fainting. He knew then that the tiny feet, tiny feet of Krishna had these markings on them and they had left their impress wherever they went. All the lines which stood for good fortune like Abjareka, Yavareka and Anu Ankusha Reka could be found on these grounds and the eyes of Akrura filled with tears of joy. He said, These are the markings made by the feet of my Lord. Fortunate indeed is Brindavan, which has become sanctified forever by the fact that the Lord once walked here. How can I set my feet on this holy spot? He fell down, placed the dust on his head and he rolled towards the home of Krishna saying, I will not touch with my feet what my Lord has sanctified. 
In the meantime, Rama and Krishna had come back from the forest after grazing the cows. They knew what Akrura was expecting to see them and to please him, they gave him darshan, which he had been imagining in his mind all through the journey to Brindavan. Akrura arrived at the house of Nanda. He reached the doorway. He entered and feasted his eyes on the glorious sight which he had been aching for, the sight of the two brothers. They looked so much alike and so different. One was wearing blue silk and the other wore garment of silk which was golden yellow. One was fair like the moon and the other dark like a rain cloud. Both were young and their eyes were like newly bloomed lotuses. Long lovely arms which reached their knees. Handsome beyond the bourne of description. Soft and gentle eyes which were full of compassion. Eyes which smiled at everyone. Their walk like that of young elephants with dignity and grace writ on their faces. They were wearing jeweled necklaces and also garlands strung with wild flowers. Akrura saw them and knew that they were two forms of the Paramapurusha, the beginning which causes the universe to exist. He knew that the Lord had taken these human forms and these human names, Rama and Krishna, for the welfare of mankind and for the establishing of Dharma. Akrura rushed towards them and fell at their feet. He wanted to announce to them his name and where he came from, but his eyes were full of tears. His throat was choked and he could not speak, overcome as he was with so much emotion. Krishna lifted him up and embraced him even as Akrura had imagined. Balarama then embraced him. Both the brothers took his hands in theirs and led him to the inner chambers. They gave him water to wash his feet and hands and then offered Madhuparka, a concoction of honey, curds and ghee, which was the time-honored way to greet honored guests. After they had made him rested, they made him partake of rice cooked in milk and other delicious food. After they had eaten, Balarama went and brought garlands of sweet-smelling flowers and he gave a krura, tambula, which was fragrant with camphor powder. He smeared sandal paste on the arms and chest of Akrura and made him feel most embarrassed. The Lord of Lords was treating him like an honored guest, as a great man and he knew he did not deserve the honor which they lavished on him. But he was at the same time thrilled. When they were sitting relaxed, Nanda asked him, You are a scorn of the Dasharatha house. How then is it possible to be alive in the court of Kamsa? You make me think of a goat which is being brought up by a butcher. How can I ask you if you are all well, knowing that you live under the rule of a man who loves himself so much that he killed newborn infants which were born to his sister, his once beloved sister? Krishna now took up the questioning and he asked in detail about the good people of Mathura and their welfare, about how they were able to bear the tyranny of Kamsa. He then said, there must be a reason for your coming to Brindavan. Kamsa would not have let you come unless he had some purpose to be served. Please tell us. Akrura began to talk. He told them the old story of the wedding of Devaki and the prophecy and about how Ever since then, Kamsa had been persecuting the Yadavas and their kinsmen. He told them about Narada's visit and the attempts to, of Kamsa to kill Vasudeva and Devaki for the deceit practiced by them in concealing the child and about Narada telling him that it was quite unnecessary and pointless that the first thing Kamsa should do was to get rid of the youngsters first and the killing of the others could follow later as a matter of course. He then said, Kamsa is now sure that you are the two sons of Devaki and he will not rest until he sees the end of you. He has a dreadful elephant which is named Kualayapida and he is hoping to see both of you crushed by this elephant. If that fails, he has asked the most fierce of his wrestlers to tackle you and he is secure and he is sure that they will kill you. To give a semblance of friendship, Kamsa has arranged a yaga, 
a dhanuryaga which is the excuse he has thought up to get you to mathura if during your visit there the wrestling bouts are arranged and you both get killed the people will not blame him that is his fond hope the invitation to the dhanur yaga has been sent through me i am the emissary and since i am a dasharha and partial to the yadava clan kamsa thinks that you will both be deceived nanda you have also been asked to attend the yaga i am to take these young men with me in the chariot which brought me here the brothers smiled very sweetly and said so be it we will go to mathura with you as per our dear uncle's wish nanda then gave orders for milk and other offerings and the tributes to be given to the king by smaller chiefs like him he gave orders that early in the morning he would go with some of the elders to mathura at the behest of the king he asked the town crier to announce to everyone about the dhanur yaga and that they were most welcome to join him in the journey to mathura to see the festival om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishnar pranamast chapter 199 of shrimad bhagavatam akrura the cruel om namo bhagavate vasudevaya early in the morning one of the gopis got up to sprinkle water at her doorstep and to paint pictures with flour as was the custom she saw a strange chariot at the door of nanda's house dropping her vessel full of water and the dish containing rice flour she rushed to the other houses and spread the news that someone had come to see nanda and she added the chariot is such as we have never seen before it seems to be someone from the royal house who has come come let us go and see all the women came one by one to the neighborhood of nanda's house and waited to see what was happening one bolder than the other went nearer and from somewhere near the house saw what was going on she rushed out in panic and said stop the chariot take it away hide it do something with it her eyes were ready to spill tears which had gathered there the others clustered round her and made her talk with sobs punctuating her words she said i do not know what is going to happen nor do i know who the new comer is but it seems to me he has come to take krishna away from us take away krishna screamed the others how can that happen take him where he belongs to us i do not know sobbing the girl sob the girl i know they are going since rama and krishna are dressed up as though they are going out have you ever seen them get in, get up this early today seems to be unlike the other days nanda is standing stern and sad while yashoda is weeping her heart out with her arms round krishna he is trying to wipe her eyes and speak comfortingly to her while rama is trying to rouse rohini devi who seems to be in a dead faint it looks frightening i am sure krishna and rama are going away with this man in the royal chariot with beating hearts and with their eyes blinded by tears the women stood round and waited to see what would happen they saw a movement near the door a stranger came out of the house and his dress was all rich silk and brocade proclaiming him to have come from the city most probably from the court nanda followed him and behind him came rama and krishna yashoda and rohini stood in the doorway clinging to it for support and they had covered their eyes with their hands and their bodies were shaking because of their anguished crying for the first time they saw krishna looking serious and as for rama a frown sat on his noble brow and he looked angry the gopis saw krishna and he rushed to them he was embraced by each and every one of them and they could not talk any of them they did not ask him where he was going they knew that he was going it did not matter where 
Krishna told them about the royal command and about how he had to obey or else the entire Vrindavana would be destroyed. Vrindavana destroyed asked a lovelorn girl, What do you think it will be like when you are gone? Do you think we will be able to live even for a moment without looking at your dear face? Krishna, do not leave us and go away. If Kamsa destroys us, it is no matter. We will die with our eyes trained on you and you and with our lips breathing your name. Do not make Brindavana barren and do not kill all of us. We have no one else except you and how can you find it possible to abandon us? They turned to Akrura and spoke harsh words to him. How dare you take away our darling Krishna with you? What an unsuitable name they have given you. Considering you are the personification of cruelty, you are Yama, the god of death, and you have come to take away our lives. We will die if Krishna leaves us. Krishna pacified them and told them that he had to go and that his and his father would be punished if he did not go. He did not want to be failing in his duty to his parents and to the king, even if he had happened to be a bad king. None of these words would comfort the lamenting women. Krishna left them and went to his playmates. They were numb with the thought that their Krishna, their playmate, their companion from childhood was going to the city. They had one comforting thought though, they would also be going to Mathura with their fathers and who knows, Krishna might come back with them. Krishna took leave of them and his eyes were sad since he knew that he would never come back to Brindavan, never again to the slopes of Govardhan, never again to the banks of the Yamuna. Never more would he make sweet music on the sands when the moon shed its soft beams. Never again would he hold the stick of bamboo in his hand and drive the cows to the forests. He had bade farewell to his cows. But once again, he went into the sheds where his beloved cows were standing and they were all weeping. He wiped their tears and with his forearm wiped his own tears and went to the presence of his mother. He fell at her feet and once again took leave of her. She clung to him and he had to disentangle himself from her restraining hands. Rama had already gone towards the chariot. Akrura helped him into the chariot. He placed Krishna by the side of Rama. He then sat in the driver's seat and took the whip in his hand. Krishna's eyes were trained on the faces of his beloved friends and the gopis who were devoted to him and who were heart broken now. The carts with Nanda and the other cowherds in them were being loaded with gifts for the king and soon they would begin their slow journey to Mathura. After a few stunned moments, the gopis realized that their Krishna had begun his journey to the city. They spoke to themselves. Look at this Krishna, how, he, how hard his heart is. How could he leave us like this and go away? God himself is against us or else something would have happened to stop their progress. On the other hand, all the signs are good and they prophesy success. Which is our defeat? Come, let us stop him from going. Let the elders try and stop us. We will pay no heed. They tried in vain to stop the chariot. Akrura laid his whip across the horses. Flanks and at once they began to move. The gopis and the young boys set up such a wail that their very skies resounded with their piteous cry. The chariot went further and Krishna held his hands out again asking them not to follow him and often he looked back at them and their hands held out to him. He called out to them, I will come back soon. I will send word to you. Please do not be so unhappy. They stood staring in the direction where the chariot was fast disappearing. They wiped their eyes and stared intently until the dust rising from the progress of the chariot had settled down 
and they saw nothing there far away in the distance krishna had gone away from them om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishna arpanamast chapter 200 of shrimad bhagavatam akrura sees a vision om namo bhagavate vasudevaya the chariot went fast soon they reached the banks of yamuna rama and krishna got down from the chariot and went to the waters of the river in the morning light the sapphire blue of the river was beautiful enchanting both the brothers stood there for a while each busy with the thoughts of the many years they had spent there they were the two forms of the paramatma they were the two forms the paramatma had assumed the brahman which has no involvement with the feelings which are kin to the world of men yet even they were beset with sadness as they took the water in their hands and performed the achamana and other morning rites having donned the human form perhaps they had to feel as human beings did they stood for a while talking of the carefree days they had so far they knew that those days were over they would never be boys again they went back to the chariot and seated themselves akrura then went on the yamuna to perform his ablutions which have to be performed after the sun rises he entered the river to have his bath reciting the sacred mantra which goes by the name savitri he dived under the water a strange thing happened he saw in the waters the two brothers rama and krishna he was taken aback puzzled as to how the sons of vasudeva could have come into the waters so soon he got out of the waters and raising his head he looked towards the chariot there he saw the two boys talking animatedly about something and laughing like any other young boys akrura dived again under the waters now the sight which greeted his eyes was different he saw the thousand headed adishesha coiled up and akrura saw narayana reclining on adishesha he saw the rishis led by sanaka and the seven rishis and all the denizens of the heavens adoring narayana this was the vision granted to him akrura was speechless with happiness at the great good fortune that had been his he realized what he had heard that narayana and shesha had been born on the earth as the sons of vasudeva to rid the earth of the poisons which were choking her he prayed to the parama purusha narayana even as he was praying the vision vanished from his sight the wonderment of it could still be perceived in his eyes and krishna asked him my lord what strange expression is this i see on your face did you by any chance see anything wonderful something you have not seen before please tell us let us share whatever it is that has brought this ecstatic look on your face he smiled mischievously akrura said strange things things i have never seen before you are right i saw a vision today which has opened my eyes all the amazing and wonderful things which greet my eyes are all contained in you i know it i have seen you the paramatman moving on the earth as though you are an ordinary man as human and ordinary as anyone else and ridden with the same pain and pleasure cycle as the ordinary mortal having seen this can anything else be the cause of amazement or wonderment in me i salute you lord of lords with these words akrura the son of gandini took up the reins of the horses in his hands and began to drive the chariot fast in the direction of mathura the sun had reached the western sky when they entered the city of mathura the passer by saw the two handsome youths in the company of akrura and they could not take their eyes off them 
Such was the charm they exerted on all. Nanda and his companions had already reached the royal gardens and were waiting for the arrival of the children. Akrura took the chariot straight to the palace where Nanda was. Rama and Krishna then took the hands of Akrura after falling at the feet of their father Nanda. Krishna said, Akrura, your mission is fulfilled. Go now straight to your home and tell your king that you have brought the youngsters as per his instructions. As for us, we will stay here for a while. We will then walk around and see what the city is like. You must remember we are just folk from the country, from the cow sheds, and we do not know anything about the beauties of the city. The twinkle in his eyes brought a smile to the lips of the listeners and Akrura said, It is not right that you should abandon me like this. I will not enter Mathura without you. Please honor my, me by coming to my humble house with your brother and make it sanctified. Please let the dust of your blessed feet make my home a hallowed spot in Mathura. Let me wash your feet and the water will purify me from the dread sin of karma of being born again and again in this world of sin. Bali, the Asura king, eternal fame to his because he has washed your feet. Lord Mahadeva held the river Ganga in his matted locks and it was this Ganga who later flowed on the earth and gave sanctity and a place in the world of the mains for the sons of Sagara who were a heap of ashes from for eons of time. That Ganga is but the water which washed your sacred feet. Even so, make me fortunate enough to wash your feet with my hands and let pure Ganga flow in my home. Krishna wiped the tears from the devoted Akrura and said, I have ever been fond of my Bhaktas. They are always dear to me and I have never refused them anything. But then, Akrura, let me attend to the most more urgent task that is mine. I have to rid the earth of this sinner by name Kamsa. I must con comfort my kinsmen, the Yadavas. I must meet my parents for the first time. When that task is over, I will surely come to your home and spend some time with you. But now, it is not right for you to stay so long with me. Go back to the city and tell Kamsa about the success of your mission. Akrura went back with a heavy heart. Krishna and Rama, who were now reunited with their playmates, took the permission of Nanda and the other elders to go around the city and see the sights. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai Shri Krishna Pranamast